Thank you for joining us this Friday the 20th of May. I'm Sophia Mavridis, a market analyst with Bell Direct. Well, earlier this week, the wage price index was announced, which saw annual wages growth fall short of market forecasts, coming in at 2.4% over the past year and rising an average of 0.7% over the March quarter. This emphasizes that although wages have edged higher, they're still not keeping up with the rising cost of living. Now, following the release, the Australian dollar fell and bond prices rallied. Wages growth is a key component of the RBA's analysis of inflation. And while the 2.4% wage increase is still the highest reading since Q4 2018, it is behind inflation at 5.1%. In economics, we call this scenario the wage price cycle, which describes how higher wages result in higher prices. When inflation is too high, consumers' purchasing power is reduced and workers seek higher wages to compensate. Then higher wage growth either leads to firms raising their prices further or reducing the number of workers they employ. Considering this, the unemployment rate for April was also released this week at its lowest level on record of the monthly survey. Unemployment remained unchanged from the month prior at 3.9%. Now looking at the market's reaction this week so far, the ASX 200 is down 0.15% Monday to Thursday. Consumer staples have taken the biggest hit, falling 3.7%, while industrials, utilities, materials and energy are higher week to date. The tech sector has also managed to gain 0.5% this week after having suffered heavy losses. Taking a closer look at the ASX 200, biotech company Imugene IMU's the best performing stock rising over 14% this week and rising over 17% in Thursday's session alone. The rally follows news that the company has dosed its first patient in phase one of its cancer research clinical trial, which aims to shrink advanced tumors. Following IMU this week were the big names in lithium, iron ore and oil, including Orkham, AKE, Pilbara Minerals, PLS, Mineral Resources, MIN, Liners Rare Earths, LYC and Champion Iron CIA. And although the tech sector managed to gain week to date, tech stocks declined the most this week. Leading the losses were BNPL stock ZIP, which recently changed their ticker code from Z1P to ZIP and payment company Tyro Payments, TYR. If you're considering buying into tech, Ord Manette have a buy rating on TYR with a $3 price target. They say the company is on track to reach their FY22 time to value TTV estimate. And the company is also seeing high frequency app downloads and active users are favoring the product. On the all odds, large gains were posted by Infomedia IFM, which jumped 29% this week. Earlier this week, IFM announced that it had received a proposal from TA Associates Management for the 100% acquisition of the company via a scheme arrangement at a price of $1.70 payable in cash. Yesterday, Bell Potter downgraded their recommendation on the stock from a buy to a hold. Their view is that the $1.70 cash offer is reasonable and it's a 26% premium to the three-month VWAP volume-weighted average price of $3.35. Bell Potter have also lowered their price target from $1.85 to $1.80 and the $1.70 offer is also only an 8% discount to this price target. IFM last closed at $1.65, implying 9.1% share price growth in a year. Strong gains were also posted by Antiotech, ADO, Grange Resources, GRR and Bubs Australia, BUB. Meanwhile, the stock that declined the most was Step One Clothing, STP. The most traded stocks by Bell Direct clients this week were Fortescue Metals, New Hope Corporation, Tap Corp Holdings, BHP, Lake Resources, Champion Iron, Cube Holdings and Westpac. Clients also bought into Sigma Healthcare, while took profits from NAB Bank. And the most traded ETFs were the Vanguard Australian Fixed Interest Index ETF, that's VAF, the Vanguard All World X US Shares Index ETF, VEU, and the Vanek Australian Equal Weight ETF, MVW. And to end, economic data to look out for next week includes the S&P 500 Global Manufacturing and Services Flash PMI for May, which is set to be released on Tuesday. 
So PMI stands for the Purchasing Managers Index, and this is an index that we look at each month that gives us an indication of the direction of economic trends in the manufacturing and services sectors. Next week, we'll receive the Flash PMI, which is a forward-looking estimate of the final PMI set to be released the week after. The index is calculated from a monthly survey of supply chain managers, and a PMI above 50 represents an expansion when compared to the month prior. Now, the movements in the PMI are used by market analysts, investors, and for business decisions, such as budgeting, staff management, and cash flow forecasts. And that's all for today. I'm Sophia Mavridis with Bell Direct. Have a great day and happy trading.